What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are gonna be going through a couple of things that can help you play more relaxed on court and be able to control your opponent without feeling pressure on yourself. That was one of the things that was asked for in some of the comments. And as I said, I'm gonna be giving you guys things that you personally request. So let's get right into it. So we've got three exercises for you in this video. The first one is simply called the numbers drill. What it is, is basically putting your intensity on a scale of one to 10 and figuring out what's the level that you need to play at or practice at to hit with the person that's across the net from you. You'll notice that whenever you watch the pros play, if they are playing against a certain person, their level seems to go up and down based on what's necessary. Novak is a perfect example. Roger Federer, before he retired, was a perfect example. They would be hitting the ball at whatever the number was that they needed to play at, and then you'd see them turn the game up at the moments when it was most necessary because they had saved what was necessary for the time that they needed it. So if you can beat your opponent or hit with your opponent playing at what we would call your level six, there's no need to put pressure on yourself and come out trying to play at a level nine if it's not going to actually affect the score line more. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna just hit with Emily and I'm just gonna call the intensity level that I'm gonna be trying to maintain throughout our rally. So what number are you doing? Five. So Emily picks a five. I'm gonna play at a two. So this is my level two. My footwork doesn't change but the acceleration of my stroke remains at the speed that I would need it to be at. Now, as you can see, when I hit that last shot, I hit a winner, but I didn't go for more speed. I took up a better court position, but I'm still playing at that moderate level two number because I want to feel like I can construct points without putting more pressure on myself. Let's change the number up. Can you go higher? Yeah. All right, so you go seven, I'll stay at a two. So she's gonna go faster and I'm gonna to try to maintain this level. Even with my opponent playing better shots now. Now, some might call this pushing, but it's only pushing because of the number I chose. I could pick a different number, but the point is I'm not letting the level she, she decided dictate the level that I wanna use. The number I'm gonna pick now, I'm gonna bring my level up. I'm gonna go nine. I think she's scared. Here we go. <laughs> now, I have the ability to turn that up, but her shot or her level didn't dictate what I wanted to do. That exercise is super simple to practice. You just jump on court, both of you pick whatever your relative numbers are and just play up and down. Sometimes you'll both be up at the high end, sometimes you'll both be at the low end and anything in between, but it's super easy and super, super, what's the word? What's the word? Important, yes. Super important to be able to feel like you can maintain comfort at different levels. So let's get into the next exercise. So our next exercise is what I call the rock, paper, scissors drill. If you remember a couple of videos ago, I talked about the fact that there are only really four ways to hit the ball. You have your rally ball, heavy ball, flat ball, and a slice. Now you can obviously turn the rotation up and down and change the trajectory, but you're always gonna be hitting one of those four shots. In this exercise, if you know those four types of shots, you know that the rally ball is basically your neutral shot. And we're gonna actually take that out of this point. You can only hit a heavy ball, a flat ball, or a slice. And with rock, paper, scissors, each shot has a natural counter that keeps you in the point. So for example, if you hit a flat ball, it usually takes the time away from the person, slicing the ball will be the right choice. If you hit a good slice, it forces the person to have to really accelerate and pick it up, there's your heavy shot. And if you hit a good heavy shot, People want to take it early before it kicks up against them, so you take it flat. 
So Emily is going to use any of those shots and I have to use the appropriate counter over and over again. So that allows me to relax because I don't have to figure it out on the fly. I already know what the right answers are. So for your assistance in this video, I'm going to call out the shot that she's hitting and I'm also going to call out my response so you can see the difference in the way the balls are traveling. Remember, we can't use the rally ball. Either flat, heavy, or slice. That's heavy. I go flat. That's flat. I slice it. That's a slice. I go heavy. That's heavy. I go flat. That's a slice. And I go heavy. Nice job. A lot of variety there. That's pretty good. Whatever you want. Slice, so I have to pick it up. Heavy. That's a flat ball. Slice it back. That's a heavy ball. Go back flat. That's a heavy. Skipped off the line. Good shot. So all I'm doing is letting her dictate whatever the shot is that she wants to use. And I'm just giving the right response. So now without me talking, I lean backwards. I lost my focus. Got to step in when the ball goes flat. Good shot. We'll just say that I made that shot. So again, one person has to be the controller of the point. They get to do whatever they want. Slicing, heavy balls are flat, and it's your job to react using the right countermeasure so that you can stay in the point and keep the point at a amicable level. Let's get into the last row. For our last exercise, I'm gonna be using these three dots. You can use lines on the court or you can just basically make it an intrinsic understanding of where the court zones are. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this green dot somewhere inside the court based on my level. I'm gonna have the yellow dot right near the baseline, I'm gonna have the red dot in the back of the court. The whole purpose of this exercise is understanding whether I should be attacking, whether the point is neutral, or whether I am on defense. Having a quick understanding of what the situation is that you're in will allow you to pick the right shot. A lot of people pick their shot before they pick their situation, and then they end up having to make a decision at the last second. If you know you're on defense, your defensive options are very obvious. If you know you're on offense, your offensive options are very obvious. So using these dots, all I'm going to be doing is calling what color I'm standing in, which will basically limit my decisions to the shots that should be used in that zone. So let's get into this last exercise. So for me at my level, I feel like I should be able to attack most balls where I end up in this position here. This is my neutral zone, and the only way I would really need to be defensive is if I'd crossed this dot here. Anything in here, I feel like I could rally pretty easily. That being the, cut, the case, anything from here to here, I'm gonna say yellow. Anything behind this dot, I'll say red. And anything in front of this dot, I will say green, because that's my cue. So, ready? So that's yellow. Yellow. That's green for me. That would be green again. Yellow. Yellow. Red. Yellow. Green. So as you can see, as soon as I cross that line, green puts me in offense. And again, my green ball doesn't have to be a winner attempt. It could just be me trying to take a little bit more control of the point. Yellow. Green. Red. Yellow. Red. Yellow. Red. Red. Yellow. 
<laughs> so that wraps up this video. Those were three exercises to help you be more relaxed and construct points without putting that pressure on yourself and knowing how to keep the pressure on that side. Each one of those exercises has its place in your practice if you know what to focus on. The color zone drill, that just makes you pay attention to what you should be doing based on the situation you're putting yourself in. The numbers drill, that makes you have to figure out how to construct the point without overdoing it or underdoing it. And then the rock, paper, scissors drill, that just makes sure that you're making the right decision based on the ball that the person's giving you and you're not missing shots that you shouldn't miss based on not reading the action that they put on the ball. But if you guys know anybody that will benefit from these videos, forward this video over to them. But that's gonna wrap it up. We'll see you guys in the next one.